Hey guys, welcome to Crafts Go Bloom, and today we're going to be making this no sew flamingo bird. It gets finished in under an hour, and I think that you're going to do a great job at this. The way this pattern is going to work is the pattern will read across the screen, and I will slow down sometimes and break down those rounds with you. But if I go too fast, because sometimes I'm going to be time lapsing what we're doing, just go ahead and pause. That's what this video is meant for, for you to pause it, catch up with that round, and then unpause it. That way you can be crocheting plus doing whatever else you would like to be doing at the same time, listening to someone else or watching a TV show, that kind of thing. I will also have this pattern linked below if you would like the PDF to follow along with or if you would just like a hard copy to take with you. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'm glad you're here. Let's take a look at our supplies for today. I've got a pair of sharp scissors, a stitch marker, a tapestry needle, safety eyes, and I'm using 12 millimeter safety eyes today. And then I've got two crochet hooks just because I get a lot of comments about how they use the same hook that I suggested and it didn't work out well. I've got a six and a half here and a six and working with Bernat yarns in different kinds, I will go back and forth between these. Really you need whatever hook you're going to be able to use that crochets um, uh, tight stitches so that you're not seeing stuffing through the plushies. And then the last thing that I'm going to be using is stuffing. So let's take a look at our colors. I have Bernat Baby Blanket in the color white. And we're going to be using that for some of the details on the face. I have Bernat Blanket in the color coal. And we're going to be using that for some details as well. And the black is used for the nose. And then these two colors of pink. I'm going to be using this more vibrant color of pink for the main body and this lighter color of pink for the feet. These are both Bernat colors, but these are from skeins of Ogo yarn. And so I'm not sure the exact color names, but you need a brighter pink and a lighter pink. Now, the first thing we need to do for this pattern is make two feet. So I'm going to walk you through the pattern for one foot, and then you will need to pause it, go back, make another foot, and then continue on with the pattern. So I'm gonna start with a slip stitch and we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to slip stitch one there and slip stitch in the next space. Now we're going to chain two. One, two, and then we're going to do the same thing. Two slip stitches back down. That second one is going to go in the same space that, um, that we've already gone into previously. And one more time, we're going to chain two and slip stitch two. And then we're going to slip stitch up the rest of the leg. You should have two remaining stitches to do that. And then I'm going to chain one to finish off. And I'm going to cut a tail that's about the same size as that starting tail because we are going to just use those tails to tie this into the flamingo body when we get to the end of it. So now you're going to want to make a second foot and then I'll meet you back here once I have that finished. Okay, I have both of my feet finished and let's take a look at this. The part that has more of the bumps is the bottom and the part that is flatter is the top. The uh, talons, I guess, or toes, they sort of curl upwards. That's the top of your stitches. And honestly, what really matters is just that you pay attention and you have them both going the same direction. Uh, if they're upside down, it's actually not going to look bad. It would just look a little strange if one was up and one was down. So set those to the side and we will get to those near the end of the bird. We're going to start off the main body of this pattern with a magic ring. And the way I make my magic ring is to hold the yarn and pinch it with my thumb, wrap it around those first three fingers and pinch that X go across the back of my hand and grab it with my pinky. Now I'm going to 
stick my hook under the first loop and grab the second one and then I'm going to give it a twist and then I stick my hook in the yarn that you're holding with your pinky and I grab it at the same time so that it's tight and pull it through and then we're going to pull that tail out and for round one we're going to do seven single crochets into this magic ring and you do that by inserting your hook and pulling up a loop yarn over and pull through two and that's one single crochet so insert that hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then we're going to pull that tail to tighten that magic ring don't pull so hard that you break your yarn that's definitely possible and put my stitch marker in for round two we're going to increase in every stitch and we're going to repeat that seven times for a total of 14 stitches and an increase is just doing two single crochets into each space For round three we're going to increase and then single crochet one and we're going to repeat that pattern seven times for a total of 21 stitches so we're going to increase in the first and then just do one single crochet and then we're going to increase again and then one single crochet so go ahead and finish this round and I'll meet you back here when I'm done for rounds four five and six you're just going to single crochet in each stitch for a total of 21 stitches in each round so we've got three rounds of this round four round five and round six just do 21 single crochets for each of those and I'll meet you back here with a few more rows added on for round seven we're going to single crochet 10 and then we're going to make the beak out of the black and then we're going to single crochet another 10 in the pink so have your black handy let's start with the first 10 single crochets And when you get to that 10th single crochet, you're going to pull up a loop and then stop and change colors to the black. And that'll finish out that, that single crochet. Now I'm going to put the black tail down and I'm going to crochet over the pink. And in the next stitch, we're going to go in the front loops only and we're going to do a half double, a double, and then another half double. So for half double, you yarn over. insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three and for a double you're going to yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two now on that second half double you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop and then you're going to drop the black and pick the pink up again and pull through with the pink and that is going to be the end of your beak and then we have 10 more single crochets to finish out the round
So it should be starting to look like this. For round eight, we're going to single crochet 10, and then we're going to single crochet one in that back loop behind the beak, and then do another single crochet of 10. Let's untwist that yarn a little bit first. So we're done changing colors, but after you do that 10th single crochet, we're going to go under the beak in the back loop that we left from the previous round and do a single crochet there and then skip over the beak and do 10 more single crochets in the pink. And that's going to cause the beak to form like a little cup under there and come to a little bit of a point. And for round nine, we're going to do 21 single crochets for a total of 21 stitches. Once you finish round nine, we're going to take a little break, pull out the working yarn and take care of the tails on this beak. And so I'm going to cut the working black yarn off of there. And then if you crocheted over them in the exact same way that I did, You've got a pink stitch in there in between the two black tails and you're able to just tie that into a couple of knots and you can tie these tightly. It's not going to uh, distort the beak. It's just going to kind of pull it in where we want it. And then we're done with those. They can kind of just hang out and uh, stay out of the way. And then I'm going to stop here and add the eyes as well since we're already taking a break. I like to add them between rounds six and seven, about four stitches apart. Um, more so what I'm looking for though is for them to be centered around the beak. I like to go up one, one round and make sure that they're centered as well. So I'm going to push those in and get the backs on and then we'll move on to the next round. All right, we're starting to look like something. So all of these extra tails, now that we're back to work, are just gonna get stuffed up in the head and kind of stay out of our way for a little bit. And we'll move on to round 10. I'm going to put the description of round 10 on the screen here and just let it sit for a second so you can kind of read through it if you'd like. And then we're just gonna break this down part by part so that each bit of it actually makes sense for you. So the first thing we're going to do is single crochet one. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Now you're going to skip the first chain on the hook. And then we're going to single crochet one in the next two chains. And then single crochet again in the starting space. Before you did that, that chain three. And now single crochet five. Once you're done with those five, the next thing we're going to do is make the wing. And we're going to do that by making five double crochets in the front loop only of the next stitch. So we're going to yarn over, grab that front loop only, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. But we're going to do five of those in the exact same space. And then we're going to single crochet nine.
And then we're going to make the second wing. We're going to make it the exact same way we made the first. Five double crochets all in the same space and all going in the front loops only. Now we'll stop and take a break for a second. I like how my wings look right now. If they are not showing up in the right spot for you, it could be for a couple of reasons. It could be because you're yarning under instead of yarning over. If you yarn under, they're not going to look even. And it could also just be the tension. Um, if you're using a different tension on the project and you're kind of ending in a different place than I am, then they're gonna show up in a different spot and that's okay just move them where you need to. Maybe you don't need nine single crochets in between them. Maybe you need more, maybe you need less. And just make sure you have, let's see, 36 stitches at the end of the round, and that's counting those double crochets. Um, and as long as you have those 36 stitches at the end of the round, it doesn't matter if you actually have nine in between here or not. Now, the next thing we're going to do after the wing is we're going to take the stitch marker out because it's not going back in that same spot anyways, and we're going to single crochet eight. So the first one, two, three, four, and five are all pretty normal. Those are just into regular stitches, but now we've got to deal with this tail part here. So we're going to go over here. I have a little bit of a gap there. So after your fifth one, we're kind of moving over as if there's a space to do a sixth, and then seven and eight are working in that back loops of the chain that we made at the beginning. And that is the new end of your round and that's where we need to put our stitch marker. Now we're gonna take a break again and work on embroidering the white on the face. Okay, I've got my white yarn. I just cut a scrap of it, and I've got that threaded onto my tapestry needle, and we're just going to be making an angled line across the top of the beak on both sides, so it's going to make a point. And I'm going to start here from the side of the beak Make sure I leave enough white on the inside that I can tie this in a knot. Go to the, um, the very point, the peak of the beak, and then go back down to the side over here. And then go back up to that peak, and that is it. And that's all the detail we're going to be doing on this one. When I tie this in a knot, though, I'm going to be careful that that first knot is fairly loose so that it's not pulling the yarn and then um, making it not look as nice on the front. And then any subsequent knots get tied very tightly so that everything stays in place. And as usual, I cut way more than I need, so I'm gonna cut off this long tail because I just don't want to have it in my way. And there we go, we've got our flamingo face. All right, up next for round 11, we're gonna single crochet eight, and then we're going to single crochet one in the back loop only under the wing, single crochet nine, go under the wing, and then single crochet eight again. Now, your numbers might be off if you had to change things in the last round and your wings are in different places. All that really matters here is that you're single crocheting in the single crochets, you skip the wing and you single crochet under the feather, under the feathers, and then you single crochet in the single crochets again. I hope that makes sense. If not, please leave me a comment. Let me know. So first up, we've got eight single crochets. One, two, three, We're going to completely skip those five double crochets, go underneath and grab that back loop that we left alone and do a single crochet in there. And then again, we're skipping over these five. So make sure you find the first single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to ignore that. 
And then we're gonna do nine single crochets across the front. Again, same thing under the wing, find the back loop only and do a single crochet in there, completely skipping over those five double crochet and then eight more up, whoops, drop my yarn, and then eight more single crochet up the back of the bird until you get to the stitch marker and I will meet you there. At the end of round 11, you should have 27 stitches. Now for rounds 12 and 13, we're going to single crochet 27 for a total of 27 stitches. So do that for two rounds and then meet me back here when you're finished. After finishing rounds 12 and 13, you should have something that looks like this. And for round 14, I will read this off and then we're going to break it down. We've got four invisible decreases, single crochet three, invisible decrease three, single crochet four, invisible decrease three for a total of 17 stitches. So the first thing we've got is four invisible decreases. To make an invisible decrease, you're going to go in the front loops only of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. So we've got four of those in a row. And then we're going to do three single crochets. Make sure after you do an invisible decrease and you start to do a single crochet that you're really going into the next stitch and you're not going back into um, part of the stitch that you just used in the invisible decrease because that can happen. And then next we've got three invisible decreases. And then we have four single crochets. And then three invisible decreases to finish up the round. Now we're going to take a break, pull out that working yarn, and add our feet. It's looking pretty good. Remember when you look at your feet, we're trying to make sure that they're both going the same direction. We're going to be adding the feet between rounds 13 and 14. So we just did 14, and then we have 13 before that. So we're going to be adding them in between the last two rounds. And they're about four stitches apart. But what I really like to do is use my hook and go straight down from the eye. And then I'm going to put the foot right there and I'm going to hook one side of the yarn and pull it through one side of that stitch. Goodness. Oh, my thumb was on it. There we go. <laughs> Not usually that hard. And then we're going to go over top of the stitch in the dark pink here. And we're going to grab the other side of that, that foot and pull that tail through. I'm not going to tie that just yet because I want to get both feet on here and make sure that they're both looking good together. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. They're closer together than four stitches, but I'm okay with that. As long as they come down from the eyes and they're centered around the eyes and the beak, 
and everything looks straight, I'm happy. So we're going to tie the feet on. You're going to tie a knot. You just want to make sure that you have the two tails from this foot, you tie those together. The two tails from the other foot, you tie those together. If you crisscross them, it can get a little tricky to see what's happening. And I'm just going to tie two or three tight knots in the back. And then I'm going to stuff all those tails in there, and we're going to stop right now and add stuffing. You're only going to be able to stuff it about this far because this is, the tail is open, and so when we work on the next round, we'll be able to stuff more into the tail, but you'll want to get as much in there as you can right now. Okay, that's all the stuffing I'm going to put in there for now. I do like to add a little extra stuffing because... I know that these are going to probably be bought by kids who are going to do a lot of squishing on them, and so I want to make sure that after they've squished it a few times, it still looks nice and it doesn't start to look flat. Now for round 15, we're going to do eight invisible decreases and then one single crochet, and you can keep adding stuffing as you go. As you close up this back end, then you'll be able to hold more stuffing in the tail. So go ahead, eight invisible decreases and one single crochet. When you get to the end of the round, finish off and cut a long tail for weaving. And we're going to sew up that hole that's left in the bottom with this tail. Pull that through. And then see, we've still got a little bit of an opening. You're just going to thread that onto your tapestry needle and go through the front loops only of the last round to cinch that closed. And then I'm going to go through one more just to keep closing that up. And then I'm going to go back into the bird. I'm going to skirt along the edge of the stuffing and come out over on the side and weave through the loops of the single crochets that we did before because I really want to lock in that yarn tail. It's going to keep it from coming undone if it gets played with a lot or ends up going through the wash. And that's it guys, we finished a flamingo today. This project takes me a little less than an hour, maybe about 45 minutes. If I'm using a skinnier, smaller yarn, I can get this to about half an hour. And these are great market sellers for me, plus they're just kind of a fun project if you have any friends who love flamingos. So leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of this tutorial. I would love to hear your feedback. And check out my channel. I have a ton more no-sew crochet patterns, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye!